Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Linda Gunda. I am the CEO and founder of Linda's Perfection Creations. Linda's Perfection Creations is an event planning and wedding decor company. We cater to small and large events in and around the Philadelphia area. We do full service, partial, month of coronations. We do destination weddings. Um, we do planning and decor, so you can pick either decor aspect or the planning aspect. If you want a flower, just a bouquet arrangement, a centerpiece, or something to go with your events, um, we do that as well. I'm one of those planners that meet my client at the various stages of the planning. You know, no two weddings are alike. Each couple has different needs. So my job is to cater to those needs and make sure, you know, you get everything you need. So today I'm just gonna join into the video. We're gonna talk about how to create your wedding guest list. Um, this is one of the most important thing when it comes to your weddings, creating your wedding guest list. But I guarantee if you ask out of a hundred couple, maybe 90% or 99% of them will tell you that they don't like writing the wedding guest list. It is one of the most stressful things. And why is it stressful? Trying to decide who will make the list and who doesn't make the list. Because you don't want to make people feel bad and say, oh, well, the person didn't get invited. And, you know, it's a lot. So, my advice to you is this. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry, guys. I know I've been here. It's just, it's been a hectic month. But I'm grateful. But, as I was saying, before you decide who make the guest list, you want to sit down with your partner and decide on the things. The first thing you want to decide is, what's the magic number? How many people do you want to your wedding? Do you want 10? Do you want 20? Do you want 100? Do you want 500? Do you want 300? And this is something intimate that you need to sit down and decide. Um, I understand sometimes when the parents bring for the wedding, they at times want to do a large or uh, extravagant event. They want to invite a lot of things. Um, but you one thing you have to realize, this is your wedding. No matter who's paying for it. You have to decide if you want a extravagant wedding, if you want a large wedding. And at times, sometimes with culture, religion, tradition, sometimes it's very hard to accept. Sometimes we find our family members and the aunties and moms, and that will invite more people. You have maybe 75% of the people that are at your wedding, you have no idea who they are. I've seen that happen. Um, so I'm not telling anybody to go against the family, but I'm just saying you have to decide how many people you want to you know, invite to your wedding. And then the next thing is after you decide how many people you want to decide to, I want an intimate event or a extravagant event. Intimate don't necessarily mean small. It can be like, okay, do I want 100 people or select their friends, close and family? I don't want to do extended guests, extended things. Do I want a large extravagant event where everybody's there? And one thing you got to understand, sometimes when people think intimate, they think cheap. It doesn't really necessarily some people that are playing a luxury, like one of those large extravagant events, sometimes their wedding budget is a whole lot smaller than the people sometimes that plan a small intimate wedding. Because reason being, when you have a smaller guest party, you have more money to go around and do a lot more things. When you have a large guest, there's certain things you have to cut down. There's certain things that you have to do that don't allow a lot of wiggle room to do you know, what you need to. But these are things that you need to send the overall look. How do you want to look? How to feel and everything your wedding. You have to decide that. And then also you want to think about the venue that you pick. Because this venue always calls for limitation. So if you have your dream venue that you already had in mind that you want to use. You want to make sure if that venue can accommodate your guest list. You can want to invite 300 guests or 200 people to a venue that only hold 100, 20, 20 people. You can now want to invite 100 people to a venue where the venue minimum is at least 200 people to use their ballroom. So there's a lot of things that come in mind when you have a venue that you wanted, you say, this is the only place I wanna get married. Cause you have some brides that say, well, this is the place I've been dreaming all along. This is the venue that I wanna get married to. You have to think about if for once they can accommodate that guest. If they can, sometimes you might have to find something else. So uh, when you're making your guest list, before you start, these are all the factors you want to keep in mind to decide to do, you know, what works best for you. 
one of the most important things when it comes in regards to your guest list you want to think about is the B word. And this is one of my favorite words, budget, 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 budget. Your budget can determine how many people you're going to work during your wedding, as I say. You cannot be trying to invite 200, 300 people on the budget of 35,000 or 25,000. It's not going to work. And I, I, I hate to say it like that, um, unless you're going to do a, a something, I don't know. But that's just not going to work. Because you, one of all, you have just the cost of meals anyway to fill 200 people. Let's say if it's $100 a person, minimum $100 a person, that's $20,000 right there. So if you got $30,000 budget and you was pretty much having both food and drinks and venue and everything else, it's not going to work. So you have to make sure, okay, what am I going to do for this amount of budget that I have? How many people can I comfortably bring to my wedding how many people can I invite to the wedding on this budget because most of the time that and, and all jokes aside one of the things that I see a lot people have invite a lot of people and then in the end they put a lot of stress on them because you cannot accommodate this cry you cheat yourself out of getting things that you want because you don't have the budget for that so my recommendation is always go smaller and make sure you have everything you want for your wedding and not do it to please people. In the society, sometimes people do so much to please other people. And you got to understand this. No matter what you do, if somebody don't like you, they don't like you. If somebody will still talk crap about you, whether you can have the most luxury wedding, they will still do the come and be eating your food and sitting there and giving you looks and do everything that is. I'm not saying everybody that, but don't plan your wedding to satisfy other people. Plan your wedding based on a what you want or don't try to compete with the joneses we are so focused in competing that in the end we don't get what we want because we're trying to look for things to make other people happy don't do it and then another thing you want to do is that you have to decide when to cut the list down because you got to think about this way okay well if i initially say i wanted to draw 100 people think about how those people are impact of your life how is this person being here make make or break a difference on your wedding if you haven't talked to somebody a high school a friend or a close family member for about the last five years or they don't barely even know the person you're married to they don't even know they don't need to be at your wedding they can see pictures they can get them, but no they can have come to the cookout they can come to something else if somebody you not and i understand we have some friends maybe you may not talk to them often, but you are guys are in constant communication. They have some kind of information about your life and where it being. Yeah. But somebody who have no idea, nothing about you. And you say, oh, because I have a wedding or because they are family, they have to come. No, they don't need to. They shouldn't be there. And, and, and I'm sorry. And then another thing is that you need to check with your parents. Like I said, when it comes to that, parents may have their list and you may have your list. You can ask your family and friends. Okay mom and dad i we both gonna give you guys five people some people allow their parents to invite as much guests as they want um as i say sometimes when parents paying for stuff maybe the culture or certain things come in mind that those things you know affect that but you want to make sure that you know these things come you want to have two lists and then trim it like it's list b of definite people that are going to come b is the one that possibility and then at the end of the time, compare and contracts. Sometimes what I say is that let your groom do his list, let you do your list. It don't necessarily have to be that way. You guys look at it and see if you have the exact same people. If you don't, the one that you don't, and compare and see, okay, well, maybe this person is. And, and go down the list. Find whatever works for you. Do something that will work for you that you guys will be able to, you know, make sure that things come. But you want to make sure that you invite people to the wedding who are special to you. You want to invite people to your wedding who's going to make it fun, who's going to be happy for you, who's want to be there and enjoy it. Don't just invite people just because you want to show off or, pay, or they have to come or I went to this person's wedding, so they have to come to the wedding. I don't feel bad. But, you know, then again, I guess maybe you guys have to learn wedding all the time. But that's not about all seriously. Invite people to their wedding that means something to you, something that that means something to you guys as a couple, a family, a friends member that you you just cannot sing your wedding going without without them being there. 
don't just bring anybody to the list because you pay money for these people. They come in, they sit in, they have to eat, they have to have drinks, they have to do a lot of things. You pay extra. So if I'm going to pay for something, make sure it's exactly what I want. But that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Linda Gunnell. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And also, you can follow me on lindasperfectioncreations.com at www.lindaperfectcreationsevents.com. Thank you, and have an amazing day.